of a kind on everything. I gotta live like a king. <laughs> hey, catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens, I got four of a kind on everything. Diggers, living elite, I don't feel complete, without kicking at my feet, in a Rolls Royce every week, maybe this is deep, listen close when I speak, I need to at least, cause I'm too much, got two nuts and give zero fucks, I've been playing too long for you to tell me having two women is too wrong, the way I get my groove on, if I can't have two, then I gotta move on, even my car is too toned. So when I roam, I gotta bring you home. Quit banging my line, ho. Quit banging my line, ho. Yeah, me act like you don't need see me act like you don't even know me ho. understand what we're doing here like william for example was at the last conference random come on baby get a clue how you do what you do how do you fall in love with me but i'm not in love with you peace to the saints peace to the saints peace to the saints, peace to the saints. it's the big homie the one and only Facts Kellerman, Steven, hey, Pimp, your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber, the warrior king of this YouTube thing, the idol of James Bond, Marquette Devon Burton, the saint and the sinner, giving you lessons from a pimp. And today, saints, we are talking about first dates. And the reason this is so critical and I don't think I'm going to need this too much, is because if you're spitting a lot of game, you should be going on a lot of first dates. And the first date is really the key to success in terms of getting value from a woman. But the great challenge with the first date is you got a lot of scamming going on. So number one, you should be asking yourself, <clears throat> how do I engage the first date process so that, number one, I don't get used, uh, number two, I can actually enjoy the process, meaning I too enjoy the first date. You feel me? You should actually be having a good time. The sad reality is we actually go into it often as men thinking, how can I impress this girl? And why are you trying to impress her? Because you want something from her. What do you want from her? Oh, we know what you want. And she knows what you want. And low key, nine out of nine, she's playing defense. Steve Alexander said, peace to the saints. Hope all is well. Glad to hear from you again. Ready to learn again, saint. Oh, true indeed. So let's talk about first dates. Number one, you might not know that a lot of females, they actually go into first dates because they're hungry. Yeah, that's right. They're on tinder, tinder, trying to get a free dinner. It's a real pity. You've probably been used in this way. Either A, she ain't ate all day because she can't cook and she's broke, and she's going to use you for that free dinner tonight. And then as soon as that food has been consumed, and the check is about to come. They pull this move. It's a common move females pull. It's quite comical. You guys have finished eating. The check comes. She never asked for the check. You always got to ask for the check. I wonder why. And then when the check is on its way, she says, um, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. So she goes to the bathroom while the check's coming so that you could pay that bill. And it's not awkward. She doesn't even have to do the fake. Oh, do you want me to? Eh, you know you wasn't about to pay that check. So that's number one. Or they do the other form of usury, wherein they go on the date and Shorty's over here like, oh, can I see the wine list? Oh, yeah, I'll have some Cabernet. And then she she knocked that one back like a sailor. Waiter come back over. She was like, yeah, um, yeah, I'll have some rosé. Yeah, can you fill this up? Oh, can I have a sample of the dessert wine? And she knocking it back, $20, $30 glasses of wine like it's nothing. She's ordering the filet mignon and all these things she can't pronounce on your bill. And you scratch your head like, damn, shorty, would you be ordering all of this if you were catching the check? Probably not. One of the underlying questions for men is like, Quet, I mean, should we be paying for this first date? Yeah, I think it's fine to pay for the first date if you invited her out. Nothing wrong with that. Should she be paying for the second date? Yeah, probably. Either that or we going half seas, we going Dutch or something. Uh, this ain't welfare, love. Vibing out said, you really giving us 
more content than ever this month as promised. Peace to the saints. Yes, sir. And more to come. And Solon said, blessings, good sir. I'm at work at the moment, but wanted to send tuition for the big homie. Hey, I truly appreciate the support. Thank you to those who are hitting cash tag M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T, -T, as well as those who come through via Super Chat on YouTube or PayPal Marquette B. Truly appreciate your support. Yeah, so the girl either goes to the dinner merely to eat or she actually likes you but goes to the dinner and orders things that are a bit more extravagant than her lifestyle would allow. So she's utilizing you as an upgrade to her lifestyle. And sure, she'll give you what you want at the end of the night, you dig, let you max it out, but you had to go through significant expense, unnecessary expense, to get there. And therein lies the problem. Number one, if you deal with the first girl who basically uses you for a free meal, she thinks you're Uber Eats out here, you deal with that shorty, you, you've taken an L because you didn't get the draws and you got broke for your money. You deal with the second chick is not so bad, but you know that your relationship over the long term won't be a strong relationship because after all, she doesn't view your money as her money and that'll probably never develop, meaning that she'll never look at you as one because she's a user by nature. A good person, even if they're a stranger to you, they would never use you for your money. For example, when I lived in South Korea, the exchange rate, U.S. dollars to won, it involves some significant math every now and then. And there were times that I overpaid and the Koreans would say, oh, no, here's your change. Now, some other countries I go to, they ain't giving you your change, you dig? Even in America, sometimes it's quite a pity. Very, quite, very sad. So those are two types of females and two types of situations wherein you are subject to being used. And for that reason, one of my number one recommendations, you didn't modify the air conditioning, did you? One of my number one uh, recommendations is that you do not go on a dinner date to start with. A dinner date is never a first date, especially when you're dealing with a female who you don't have any level of rapport with, meaning like you're not certain that she's really into you. And the reason that I say that is because a first date is when you're basically establishing yourself, number one. And then number two, if you say you met the girl on an online dating app. Hinge, Tinder, eHarmony, whatever they got out right now. I think you hit one of those wires. Okay, you're good. Keep going. You meet the girl on an online dating app. You don't really know if she likes you. In fact, you're both showing up with relatively little information about the other person. So that first date, why would you invest all the money that you would have to put into a dinner, number one? But more importantly, you're going to have to endure boredom, generally speaking, because let's be real here. How many people are great conversationalists where you can just sit down with food, there's no TV, there's no music, there's no activity, you just staring face to face talking when you have no past experience. Realize when you hang out with your friends and family, half of your conversation comes from past experience. Oh, hey, you remember when we did this? You know a little bit about the other person. You can talk about mutual hobbies. Hey, you like this video game? You like this TV show? Did you see the Kardashians? You have all that common experience, which makes it easier to flow in terms of conversation. So a dinner date is conversation heavy and conversation generally doesn't get the vagina wet. I can promise you that. It typically dries it up, especially if you make the major mistake of getting intellectual with these chicks. Major no-no. You caught up? Fantastic. Now, we got a couple points. I might have to make this a brief one. I can tell. Number one, I recommend that you do things that you would like to do anyways, but are things that are better done with a partner or, or shall we say a companion, so we don't sound like we're the Skittle Gustlers, things that are better done with a companion that you always wanted to do, whether it's taking a dance course, salsa dance, ballroom dance, or taking a yoga class, Bikram yoga, hot yoga, or taking an exercise class, or just inviting her for an outdoor workout that you lead. You know, after the workout, hey, let's walk down the street, get a smoothie at Sub uh, Subway, get a smoothie at Jamba Juice. You know, if you're in Chicago, I think they got Jamba Juice in Chicago, or Smoothie King if you're in the Midwest. So those are very simple things, and they're a lot more physical in terms of the experience. When you have a physical experience, number one, it's automatically less boring. Number two, there's a lot less conversation. Number three, being that it's physical, you're likely to come into physical contact with that other person. It gives you a reason to lay hands on them. It also lets you test you know, how they're feeling about you. You see, because so often as men, we start to intellectualize and we look at the world as problems to be solved. We're not 
properly utilizing the tools that would allow us to communicate more effectively with women, i.e. emotion, i.e. charm, uh, romance, adventure, all of these different emotions that we can leverage to engage that female brain. He said, peace to the saints, paying tuition. Bridget, it's great to hear your voice again. Peace to the saints. You got some fans, huh? <laughs> we have Ricardo came in on PayPal. He said, peace to the saints. Thank you for the lectures. You're very welcome. And I appreciate those of you who do actually, uh, you know, give thanks for the work. It does mean a lot. And Ivan Anderson, the gentleman mastermind, just sent a super chat. He said, tuition. Peace to the saints. Good to see Ivan. I think he actually just uh, copped some drip from mdblabel.com, if I recall. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yes, indeed. And also the hat and the shirt are both linked in the description. Um, so what I'm trying to help you do, gentlemen, is avoid having your time, money, and emotions undervalued. Your time, because if a chick is going out with you just to get her dinner paid for, then that's a waste of time because you'll never see her again. It won't convert to anything at all. Major waste of time, obviously a waste of money. And worst off, it's a waste of emotion because we both know you can be destabilized emotionally. When you have the wrong emotions, you're not as productive. When you have the wrong emotions, you're not as happy. And we know that these things can take a toll not only on your wallet, but also on your state of mind. And so that's why we're giving you these tips so you can engage this process effectively. Another thing that you have to have a high tolerance for is understanding that when you're going through the dating process, you're not looking to be successful every single time or even most of the time, because let's be real. If you're talking to three girls per day and you talk to three girls every day for seven days a week, that's 21 women. You don't want to be successful with all 21 women. You ain't got time like that. You want to be successful with the ones that you vibe with the most. And for that reason, when you talk to that first or you go on that first date, you're trying to weed out the girls that you're not vibing with. See, the problem with guys is that because you want to have intercourse with the girl, you're trying to vibe with every single girl. You feel me? You're trying to vibe with every single girl looking at her for the sexual value, not realizing that there are greater values that you can get from the woman. And because of that, you feel mad or sad when things don't work out. When in reality, you should be saying, damn, I'm glad things didn't work out with Shorty because she wild boring. I can tell you there have been times I've been on a dinner date with a chick. Stupid boring. Had I been successful with a girl, I'd be like, God, I got to go on another date with this girl. She got to sit there like a dead body. And I got to do everything to entertain this broad and think of things to say because she has nothing but a peanut inside of her skull. And I'm basically interacting with my damn self. I'm dealing with a brain dead Kardashian acolyte over here. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth it to be successful. Not every battle needs to be won. So that's number one in terms of mindset. When you're going into the dating situation, you're A, trying to invest very little up front, very little in the way of money, time, emotions. Huh? And then number two, you're not even expecting high ROI. Because if you're working as diligent as I'm advising you to, high ROI wouldn't even be a good thing for you. You're trying to take the cream of the crop. You go out, uh, you spit game at 21 women that week that yields maybe four dates for the week and you take the cream of the crop, which might be two of those women, three of those women, who knows? But you're taking the cream of the crop that's most suitable for you. You're not being indiscriminate. And that's a major lesson that men can take from women is not to be indiscriminate. You know, guys, we look at a chick like, oh, she got two arms, two legs, ah, beat. Whereas women, generally speaking, A, are hypergamous or looking to upgrade and B, have some level of standards, although those standards can be a little bit squirrely and weird, but they got some. So when do you do a dinner date, if ever? It's fine to do a dinner date if you have met the girl before, you have some previous rapport with her because maybe you guys work together, so you've been working with her for a significant amount of time. So it's cool to go out with her because you know that you can carry that conversation. And you know that she's not a user. She's not trying to work a, a hamburger out of you. You feel me? So that's fine doing a dinner date. But if you meet a girl online or if you met her in person, but very briefly to where you don't have any real background on the girl, not worth a dinner date at all. Highly recommend against it. AT said, peace to the saints. I have realized on first dates that I tend to talk too much, which I think makes me talk my way out of the drawers. Mm. Any advice, big homie, on talking less at the same time being interesting? Yeah. So the gentleman said that his issue is talking too much. And we often have this issue. And one of the roots is that a, we don't have patience and B, we can't deal with the silence. We we're kind of scared that the silence signals boredom 
or the silent signals, we don't have anything to say. Let us remember that by actual nature and the science verifies this, the female is more talkative than the male. Full stop. So you should always expect that when you're dealing with a female, it should be 40% you talking and 60% her talking. And in some cases, if she's actually interested in you, she might be just as nervous. But more importantly, for her to start talking or for her to maintain talking, you got to shut up some goddamn time. And one of the great ways to do that is once you make a statement, make it sharp, short question, and then counting your head one, two, three, four, five. I've noticed that most women can't take five seconds of silence. They'll just start right up talking anyways. More importantly, if you need some strategic questions to hit her with, check out the Dr. Phil questions. They're called conversation questions, which you can see listed on patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. And remember, when you're engaging in that conversation with the female, you share your question, allow her to answer the question, and what's going to happen? We already know, generally speaking, they're going to pop the question right back at you. So you should obviously have something premeditated that you will say back that's short, sharp, funny, interesting, clear, meaningful, something to relate to her, but short. And then you might pop out a new question. Jamal sent tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Jamal. I truly appreciate it. And Rodrigo said, a few weeks ago, I asked for advice on pursuing a shy girl. Well, mm. I got her number. I uh -oh. now have to deal with her strict parents and a curfew. Wow. Any advice? Peace to the saints. Well, congratulations on catching Shorty's contact information. Strict parents can be a good thing. That might suggest that she's had some level of structure. And if she isn't in great rebellion against her parents, she might be an okay girl. You know, she might have some morals. And that's a beautiful thing. My recommendation to you is really dig into who she is because you have to first assess what your goals are and say, okay, well, who is she? Does this align with my goals? Number one. And then how do we get around these existing structures? There's nothing wrong with dealing with a curfew. The curfew is not the problem. The amount of time that you get to spend with the girl is the issue. So as long as you start earlier, you'll be good to go because you're trying to get that time investment. So you can either convert that to intercourse or you can convert that to rapport for a long-term relationship. So a curfew is not really an issue. Strict parents aren't really an issue in as much as they're not being strict because they don't like you. If they're just being strict because that's who they are, that's fine. But if they're being strict because they don't like you, that's yet another thing. So your number one goal is just to continue romancing that female and getting in her good graces. For, for the new followers that don't know what the Dr. Phil questions are, I even said the Dr. Phil questions help me with not talking too much. When mm -hmm. I ask certain questions, they'll usually talk for a good while when they're ready when they're really interested in the answer. True story. And, that, and again, can be found on Patreon. Absolutely. And another thing to remember when you're engaging in conversation with a woman, sometimes there's no flow and that's okay. You don't have to become a jester and start performing for the young lady. There was a time I went to dinner with a, a girl who was pretty attractive, but barely had a pulse. You know, she had nothing of interest to say. Her responses were quite brief. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm not entertained by you. I'm not impressed by you. Whereas most guys are in the mindset of, oh, let me impress this girl. Let me give some good conversation. Conversation. Let me make her laugh. And I'm more so thinking about it in the perspective of you're not making me laugh. You're not entertaining me. You're not engaging me intellectually. I'm not interested in you. In fact, after we get this check, you're going home and I'm going on to whatever I want to do. Like I'm ending this date and that's okay. Not everything is going to vibe. And what you have to remember is that if it's not vibing, it probably ain't going to get better from there. You dig? Things in life generally will decline, right? Like your health, like you might be in perfect health now because you're young. And by the time you're 90, it will have declined. When you hire someone, the employees showing up to work on time at the beginning, and then eventually their true nature might come out. So if things are rocky at the beginning, I wouldn't expect them to get better. Things are not going to get, you're not going to fall more in love with someone after the honeymoon. When you get married, that's the peak right there. <laughs> Start going down. You just hope it don't go down too bad. So the point is that if it's not vibing, don't try to force it. You dig? Just, just let it be what it is. And there's nothing wrong with saying, if you notice it's going really bad, like, hey, is everything okay? Is something on your mind? You know, and if she say, hey, it's not a vibe, say, cool, baby. Uh, hey, waiter, give me that check. Hey, kick rocks. Yeah, let her go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Now, as I was saying, when you do go on a first date, do something that you've always wanted to do and something that's better with a companion. Yoga, salsa classes, outdoor workout, things like that. And the reason being is because at the end of that date, if you absolutely did not vibe with her and you know for sure you're not about to smash, you could at least say, damn, I did something that I enjoyed. I did something that I wanted to do. I spent my time in a way that was meaningful to me. I got some value out of this. And one of the nice things that I really like is if you ended up going to a yoga class with a girl, at least you got to scope what other bad bees are in the class for the next time you show up dolo. You dig? If you went to a salsa dancing class with the chick, at least you got to see what kind of other work is in there. You feel me? And it looks good that you showed up with a female. So you didn't set yourself up nice for your next move. And now your next move can be your best move. So that's why you want to make sure that everything you do in life is never wholly about someone else. Oh, show love to yourself. That's why we have that three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. And number three, be good to good people. What I often have to advise you of during that first date, and guys rarely execute on this properly, is you should be aggressive. Yes, I do mean aggressive. And I'm not saying aggressive by word. I'm not asking, suggesting that you should be saying outrageous things to the girl sexually. It's not appropriate. And it'll often send off uh, alarm bells and red flags and only increase the girl's defense. But what you do want to do is catch her off guard at appropriate times with aggressive action. You should be a man of action, not of word. And that will help you convert. Marcus said, met a girl last week that already wants to sleep with me. I took that as a red flag and told her I wanted to take, take things slow. And she got upset. Any advice? Oh, she didn't got mad, huh? You, you didn't got uh, Tatiana Ali and she heated that she can't get the swipe. Oh, that's a real sad thing. She's a pipe fiend, my boy. So number one, if she is pushing the sexual intercourse, don't believe that you're special. Surely she's done this before. And I would highly recommend that you roll that Jimmy hat back to the serial numbers. You dig in a real way uh, because she got a little bit of practice. She been in them streets like a speed bump. So that being the case, you should already know it might not be the case that she's good for a long-term relationship. I'm not saying that because she was ready to get beat down. I'm saying that because of the fact that she got angry when you didn't want to give her the pipe. And what that's suggesting to you is that, number one, she takes sexual satisfaction to be a proxy for affection and interest and love. So she puts too many things onto sex that it is not. Furthermore, she gives of the sex too freely, so she might be giving it out like Costco samples. Hey, everybody gets one here, one for you, one for you, one for you. So I highly doubt she's material for a long-term main piece. She could be a long-term side piece, or she could be a one-night hitter quitter. But from your message, I don't get the sense that that's what you're looking for. So you need to assess if she's on your roadmap and make your, your best move appropriately. Peace to the saints. For some reason, Marquette, I always find the thick baddies to be the worst to take out on dates. Mm. Most of them have a personality of a dinner table. Yes, that's correct. The ones that are turbo thick. Yes, indeed. The ones that are thick like oatmeal with no water or no milk in it. Them ones. Yeah, they usually be uh, hella stupid, especially if they're, cert if they're of certain ethnic groups. I'm not going to name any. Dominicans, Ethiopians, African-Americans. Anyways, um, they just tend to be not the brightest star in the sky. It is a real pity. I agree with you there. And, you know, what can you do uh, other than smash, <laughs> smash and dash? Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, thank you for that. Mm, I love me a thick one. Though. I can't lie to you. I also love me a slim one. What can you do when your favorite flavor is new? Carrying on. When I say be aggressive... I'm not saying be aggressive by word. That'll generally take you out of the game. When you're on a first date, if you're looking to convert, which is to say engage in intercourse, then you have to time things appropriately. Number one, if you were to start your physical advance in a totally public square, then it's unlikely that you're going to get very far with most women. Some women this turns on. But generally speaking, when you're in that first date and you would like to engage her physically and you would like it to actually lead to an eventual climax, then you need to time this to when you have her alone or you're about to have her alone and you utilize the physical advance to gauge her response so that you can then give her the verbal invitation or you can direct her to the place where you're in private 
and you can escalate things. You see that physical advance is going to let you know where things stand. And even if she rebuffs it the first time, try it again, you know, hit the reset button, try it again, because low key, some of these women are calibrated just to give you a little push off just to see what you do. You dig it. It's a part of the cat and mouse game. And, you know, if they give you the push off and you don't go for it again, then you took an unnecessary loss. Even, you know, when I was 16, I recall chicks saying, well, why didn't you go for it? I'm like, I did go for it. They're like, well, why didn't you go harder for it? Because you could have got it. And you don't want that to be the case. And some people might be thinking or some young boys might be thinking or, or some inexperienced men may be thinking, well, what if you're too aggressive? Might that cause a problem? No, no, it won't cause a problem because the truth is that no man loses because he's too aggressive. You only lose when you're not aggressive enough. Here's why. If you're very aggressive and she likes you and she's not about to let you do it that day, she's just going to push you off until another day. If you're very aggressive and she likes you and is down, then you got it in the bag right then and there. If you're very aggressive and you don't have a chance, then she's going to shut you down completely. So you've not lost anything in any case so the downside is the same, but the upside is much higher when you're aggressive. So when you're aggressive, you open up opportunity for success. And when you're not aggressive, you're going to lose. If you're aggressive, you can lose or win. But when you're not aggressive, you can only lose. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And further, uh, hit me. No pain, no gain says tips on a first date with a traditional girl. How to properly escalate things from date to date. First off, you have to make sure that she's actually traditional and know what that means. You see, I was recently in Europe and I was in two countries and in these two particular countries, the women said that they were traditional. And I was thinking, okay, gee, so you guys are Catholic, right? They're like, yeah, well, we're traditional. We're Catholic. We all look like this. We all believe in this religion. These are our values. I was like, yeah, well, how are you guys all Catholic? What are all these rainbow flags doing here? I said, like, there's more rainbow flags here than there are flags from your country. I don't even know what your country flag is. How are you guys traditional? Which is to say that human beings, especially women, use words in loose ways. You might have a girl who says she's a Jehovah's Witness, but she's taking all this D like Jehovah can't witness it. You dig? Uh, you might have a chick who claims she's a Mormon, but, you know, she's getting beat down left and right. That being the case, their words should mean very little to you, especially because women have many words, right? You must observe their deeds. And being that you can't look at the whole facts, that is to say her past, you have to really push the envelope to see where she really is, which is to say you must test the waters. If you find that she actually is traditional, you testing the waters is not going to take you out of the game. It's just going to reveal that you're a man, a, a normal man which you should be aggressive. The human male, in fact, most males in the lower animals as well, we're, we're aggressive animals. And that is appropriate. And they like that and appreciate that. So in terms of the proper escalation, the proper escalation is to do what you were going to do with the traditional girl, the same thing you would have did with the non-traditional girl. And the only difference will be the outcome based on the way the girl responds. And that will be a verification of her actual values. That's number one. Then number two, don't try to negotiate your way into the draws. You're not an FBI negotiator and this chick is not a terrorist, you dig? So don't try to talk your way into the draws. You know, you got to romance your way in. You got to finesse your way in. You got to move your way in, but don't talk your way in because generally you're going to talk your way out. You see, so if you don't get what you want, that doesn't mean talk about it. You know, hey, you know, why'd you do this when I did this? Or, hey, I tried to kiss you. Why'd you lean away? No, no, no. Just do it again or run a different strategy on it, do it in a different environment, try it in a different way, put on some R&B, do it during a romantic movie, you know, try to fluctuate your strategy. But surely, I promise you, don't try to talk your way into the draws. It never works. On Cash App, Joseph said, tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Ulysses on Super Chat said, peace to the saints. Haven't caught a live in a long time paying tuition. Peace to the saints. I was just asking about you recently. Good to see you, saint. We have Aiden said, peace to the saints. Appreciate the ism. Peace to the saints. Absolutely. And we have Upular said, I can relate with trying to vibe with every chick. Mm. Was out on a first date and I found myself trying to relate too hard to her. Right. Escalated physical touch and doctor filled, but no follow up after that. Yeah. And Upular, that's a great point. And the challenge that we experience as men 
of course we're ambitious and we want to be successful in the meaningful areas of life, health, wealth, relationships. But the challenge is that we violate the three sentence Bible when we try to vibe with every girl. Sentence number one, be yourself. Sometimes you're not going to vibe with someone and that's okay because you'd have to go outside of who you are to vibe with this girl. There was a young lady in high school named Karen Galloway. She was actually the sister of one of my friends. Now, he was cool as hell, hip-hop kid, just like me, tall, good-looking guy, very charming basketball player, and she was a punk rocker. I was like, what the hell the hell? You in a ghetto school in L.A., you's a whole punk rocker. Like That doesn't even make any sense. But anyway, she's a punk rocker, a black punk, a black punk rocker. I mean, I think I damn near was just looking at her like, is this real? Like, is this really who you, how is this possible? She's a punk rocker. She used to listen to like uh, No FX, uh, Bad Brains, Subhumans, all these punk rock groups. And the only reason I know of it, because I researched it, like, man, let me see what this broad is off of so I could try to finesse and just beat this down real quick. Um, but I tried to finesse. It didn't work because it wasn't authentic to who I am. And you got to go too far outside of yourself to vibe with these chicks who are really outside, like too far outside of your vibe. So never do it. It's just a waste of time. And sometimes you'll find a girl that, you know, maybe she's a punk rocker and you're a hip hop kid, but she appreciates that difference. She appreciates who you are, not who you're trying to be. So very meaningful uh, insight that you've gathered, which is don't do it. Mel came in by a cash app. He said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. FYTF said, peace to the saints. I've approached this girl a couple time, a couple days ago at her job. Hmm. She was telling me different reasons to not give out her socials, but ah. still was smiling and teasing, telling me to try again sometime. What should I do? Um, I'm trying not to be vulgar, so I'm not going to say what I really want to say. But the acronym of what I really want to say is FDB. And that's not in proper English. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it would be FTB, but I'm saying it FDB. And I mean that because, look, now there have been times I spit game at a chick, and I'm tell you a, a true story. I spit game at a chick, right? She's working at a hotel front desk. And she says, you know, I can't give you my phone number because it would be against the policy of my hotel. I say, okay, for sure. Well, it was nice meeting you. You have a great day. And I turn to leave. She said, oh, hold on, Whoa, hold on. Uh, take my Instagram. And then in my head, I immediately say, well, there's no way in hell that your employer said you can't give out your phone number, but you can give out your Instagram. I was like, because to the cameras, it's going to look exactly the same. You know, you're talking and I'm writing down what you're dictating, which could be a phone number or an Instagram. So clearly that's your rule and you're lying, claiming it's your employer. So then I respond to her. I say, no, no, I, I, won't, I don't want to get you in trouble. We're good. It was a pleasure meeting you. So I turn to leave again. Hold, 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 hold on one second. Hold on. No, just take my Instagram. I said, no, no, no. It's okay. I don't want to get you in trouble. It's all good. I'm not really tripping. She's like, take my Instagram. I was like, why? Like, I was like, it's all like, you know, said, shoot me the number. You can't do it. I don't, I don't need to. It's not that serious. I'm not pressed. She's like, just take my Instagram, which illustrates a couple things. Number one, she's a goddamn liar. And many of them are. Many human beings are, male and female. And number two, women are not direct. They're creatures of indirection. So rather than her being straightforward and taking responsibility and saying, I don't give out my number. I'd rather give out my Instagram because in my foolish female mind, I've convinced myself that somehow that's safer. Somehow it's easier to block guys on Instagram than it is with a phone number, which is not true. And it's far more revealing to be on Instagram with somebody because they can see your whole life and track you down. I, but in her sick female mind, giving out her Instagram is cool. I don't know. Maybe she wants to see who you are. Maybe she wants to get a follower, which she wasn't going to get out of me, but who knows? I say that to say this, when you encounter that situation where the girl is playing games like that, nine out of nine is because she's a BSer. You feel me? It ain't going to go nowhere. And out of the 10 chicks you could talk to that day, why invest your capitals in her? Your capital of time, emotion, and finances. Why? The vibe ain't, ain't there. Now, on the other hand, there's some females who they have a wall up because they might be high value. They just might not have assessed who you really are. They might be involved with someone or they just want more time and investment before they open up the gate to you. This chick probably isn't that because that's rare, but it does happen. And in those cases, I say persistence overcomes resistance. You dig? If you really want her, go at her. But nine out of nine, uh, I would go ahead and go 
and carry on. You dig? Jose came in by a cash shop. He said, tuition, appreciate the wisdom. Peace of the saints. Thank you. Dimitri said, welcome back, big homie and bridge. Peace to the saints. I do my three a day on campus. How do I build more familiarity to secure more consistent first dates tuition? Well, number one, I want you to know that the game will never be easier than it is on a college campus. So if you ain't killing right now, you got to you got to tighten up the game and you got to increase your numbers. Point blank, period. One of the places I like to start is in that classroom. And it's a beautiful thing because I like to come out of the cut, which is to say, anytime a man talks to a woman, nine out of nine, she's thinking he wants to smash. It don't even matter what the context is. As soon as you open your mouth in the back of her mind, she's like, he wants to smash. I like to come at him when, when there's some doubt. You feel me? When they're like, does he want to smash? I enjoy that. When you're in the class with the chick and you set up that study group, she might be like, nah, he probably wants to smash, but he also might just want to get an A on this test. That study group is a clean finesse because all you're really doing with a date is getting more airtime with the female so that she can become familiar with you so that you can convert that into other activities that you're more interested in. So number one, I would I would clean up on them classrooms. Oh, you got six classes, man. I would clean up on all of them. I would get into them study groups, use that as a way to learn more information about the chicks, see which ones are filling me. And I would try to convert at least three dates, three different chicks. It don't even matter if they all know each other. You dig? But always start with the finest one. Because if you start with the one that's not the finest one and you end up being successful, you're always going to look like, damn, I missed out on Shirley. And Shirley, you thick. Oh, my God, no. Shirley, you're so thick. Why are you wearing them capris? I love those capris. You don't want to end up in that situation. Okay? Um, good luck. Cedric came in by a cash shop. He said, needed this. Three days are popping off serious. Oh, man, and I was talking to a saint in Vegas recently, and he said he got to go harder than the three days. He said he ain't getting no good work. I say, hey, man, do what you got to do. The key to life is to do what works. You dig? Kevin also came in by a cash app. He said, peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. We have RS32 said, peace to the saints. Every girl I've been meeting lately has been wanting to smash super fast. Is this a result of me being that guy or them being slurs? I think that's because they're slurs, my boy. And it's 2022, about to be 2023. And it's just getting uglier with time. But here's the thing. As long as you strap up and you don't do any extra stuff that you shouldn't be doing. I'm talking about eating that cat and I ain't talking about catfish, but it's just as nasty. If you ain't doing all of that, I think you'll be fine. You dig, but keep your head together and remember how you started with the chick because how you started with her is how you should end with her, which is to say if she started off as a slore, probably turns out she's not going to turn into a nun. And so don't break that classic maxim of don't turn a whore into a housewife. Just remember. Is the game getting better? Probably it is getting better. Probably you are getting more confident and more aggressive, and that's leading to better conversion. But also, there's a lot of slores on the planet Earth. It just is what it is. Hey, enjoy yourself, though, man. Don't enjoy yourself. Don't forget about that. Carrying on. When I say be aggressive, you have people who tend to think too much, and they'll say things like, well, what if you get hashtag me too? Uh, what if you end up catching a, a charge for this? I'm not encouraging you to violate the law. And to help you not do that, may I provide you with the definition of sexual harassment from the woman. Not the true definition, but a woman's definition. A woman's definition of sexual harassment is an unwanted sexual advance from one I don't find attractive. I repeat, a woman's definition of sexual harassment is an unwanted sexual advance from one I don't find attractive. That translates to if there's a female who's named Fiona, gorgeous girl, and Marquette Devon Burton walks up on her, hit her with that Rico Suave, you dig, and then goes in for a kiss, it's a beautiful thing. If a fat-faced individual like, say, Fat Adimics or uh, Sinful the Pedophile comes up on the chick, kicks that weak game and then goes in for a kiss, she's about to slap him and then hit him with a case. You dig? Even though we essentially both went for the kiss, the difference is I'm a super player and they're super lame. And because of that, they're going to get hit with that sexual harassment case due to the fact that they're overweight and the chick doesn't find them attractive. And that's the definition of a woman's view of sexual harassment. So there you go. 
Haven said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Shout out to Haven. Shout out to the saints in Saint City. I'm glad you guys have that definition. I actually learned that one quite early in life in an English course in Los Angeles when I was in uh, university. Actually, I should say when I was in college, more accurately. The most important thing you can do every morning, I remind you, is to meditate. And the reason you're like, Marquette, why are you talking about meditation during a lecture about the fundamentals of enjoying a first date that is being successful and not getting used? It's because in the morning when you meditate, this is when you're setting your mindset. And you should set your mindset to turn on the aggressive switch for your whole day, not only for the date, but it's particularly important in terms of the date to turn on the aggressive switch because women are not going to, generally speaking, be the ones who are the aggressors. There are many times I've come to know a woman and she said, hey, I remember when I encountered you, I saw you see me and I looked away. I saw you see me and I wanted you to talk to me, so I slowed down, but I wasn't gonna say anything to you. I was just gonna put myself there for you to, for you to eat, which is to say the antelope put herself in position for the lion to eat but she ain't going to be, become a lion and behave like a lion, which is aggressive. So you have to calibrate yourself to be aggressive, which is to say some chicks, you could take them on five dates. They're not about to kiss you. You got to kiss them. And that is why that's a critical piece. And surely they will be disappointed in you. And I'll even tell you one fun fact. You might go for a kiss on a chick and she might rebuff you, which is to say not allow that, but she still is pleased that you went for it. And that was a necessary part of actually eventually getting the kiss or whatever it is you're pursuing is to be rebuffed, to have it shut down one time. That was a part of the process. So for example, say you go on three dates with a girl and you end up kissing her on the third date. Just for example, you try to kiss her on the first date, doesn't work. You try to kiss her on the second date, doesn't work. And then you successfully kiss her on the third date. And then you say, well, maybe if I would have just waited didn't kiss her on the first day, didn't try to kiss her on the second day and just tried on the third, I would have been successful and I didn't have to get rejected. No, that's not true. If you would have waited on the first and second day, she would have been scratching her head like, this dude is weird. Does this dude guzzle Skittles? Why is this dude not making any moves? I like a guy who's a little more aggressive, a little more forth. And you would have tried on the third day, she'd have shut it down, but that might have been a final shutdown. You dig what I'm saying? So you have to understand that the processes of human romance and relationship and courtship are not linear processes, shall we say. They're not efficient processes. They're designed to sometimes take time. They're designed to have some mystery and some guesswork. And that is because you're playing the, the game of mastering the woman. Okay, we have Heels In came in by a cash app. Oh, shout out to Heels In. Um, and uh, I hear you're using a new angel number, so uh, appreciate the upgrade. And then Hector came in via PayPal. He said, peace to the saints. How does one go about intelligently dealing with a naggy, hyper-emotional significant other? Woo. Well, number one, I'd be curious as to how deep in you are. And I'm not saying that to tear apart your relationship because I, I'm a true believer in family. And the basis of family is romantic love, you know, your relationship with your companion. But generally speaking, uh, people don't change. And it is especially hard for a man or woman to change if it's not by their own will. You know, if someone else wants you to change, but you're comfortable with who you are, oh, that change is not about to come. So if you find that you're fairly young in the relationship, you might start shopping for a different female. Eh. So that's consideration number one. And then number two is you have to make someone aware of things. And then number three, once you've made her aware, there have to be consequences, not that you're being, you know, draconian or vicious, but there have to be consequences to negative behavior and there has to be positive reinforcement for good behavior. And then here's point three is that the human being is inclined to forget. You know, sometimes you have a big blowout or an argument and she forgets what the argument was about. You forget what started it. And then the behavior reoccurs in the future. So you have to have a way to remind her of that error so that it should not be repeated. And you both must adjust your behavior and know that generally speaking, if you're finding recurrent misbehavior, it's not only a deficiency on the part of her personality, but it also may be a failing in terms of your male leadership. And that's something to look into. Damien said, I dig the hairstyle. Do you shave with a razor or trimmers and how often? Every day with a trimmer. Definitely do not use a razor. You'll get ingrown hairs uh, if you have curly or kinky hair. 
Yeah, so what I want you to remember with regards to dating and life is that fortune favors the bold. Be bold, be aggressive. You'll never lose that way. And you'll never have regret of what could have happened in life. You'll always know for sure because you left it all on the field. Further, always, as I said, test what the woman says because I've had some unfortunate, uh, I guess I haven't really experienced this but one time in life when I was in early high school. But you got two situations, right, where the girl is two-faced. The face that she shows to you is, oh, I'm conservative, and then you buy it. And then the face she shows to another guy is, oh, I'm conservative, but he doesn't buy it. He acts aggressively, and then he gets what he wants out of the girl, realizes she's a total slore. He's, he's maxing her out, just running through her like it's black.com, you know, doing all kind of grimy stuff to her, breaking her for money, just getting the most out of her. And you're dealing with the same girl, and you're getting almost nothing because you believed her story. Everyone has a story. Some people have sad stories. Some people have inspirational stories. But at the end of the day, most of them are fictional stories. And what you have to understand is that you have to, it's your job to separate fact from fiction. And a lot of these chicks are out here, man, winning the Newbery Prize gold medal for being a fictional story creator. Okay, no pain, no gain said how to slide back and smoothly with the girl who you haven't talked to in months. DM on IG, text, what do I say without looking desperate and putting the power in her hands? We have some history, non-sexual. Uh, so I'm going to tell you off rip. It sounds desperate. Anytime you're going into the, the situation, you're like, damn, how do I not sound desperate? It's like, damn, bro, you sound desperate already. Uh, so question number one is like, why are you going back? Generally speaking, uh, women and situations, environments from the past should stay in the past. So you really have to do some introspecting and ask yourself, well, why am I going backward in life? And if she was such a good girl and it was such a good you know, opportunity, why didn't it work then? Why am I trying to rekindle it? You should be concerned about that, which usually means that your deal flow or your new opportunities with women are not numerous. And that is due to your lack of getting out in the world. So that should be a serious concern for you. Now, the question of how do you do it? You know, I'm the saint, the sinner. I, the saint told you what you should be doing, which is find you some new women. The sinner will tell you how to do the wrong thing the right way. So you really have to think about the pre-existing rapport that's there. You know, how deep in were you with that girl? And if you were deep with her <clears throat> and you have significant connection and you think there's something still there, you know, don't pussyfoot, don't ease in, slide in the home base in a strong way. So if you guys are proximate, I would say, hey, let, let's go out and meet for a smoothie or hey, let's go out tonight and meet at this bar, whatever you guys do. And I would get that in-person meeting popped off straight away. And the reason you slide in aggressively is because if the vibe ain't there for her, she going to cut it right down. You dig? If it's there, she will say, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll meet you tonight. And don't plan it far out in, in advance because human beings are generally irresponsible and flaky. So for me, it would be like I would hit her up in the morning. What are you doing for lunch or what are you doing tonight? And try to run the play. If the play don't run, then you already know. Rakeley said, peace to the saints. Finished your brand video this morning. <coughs> Tremendous value. Absolutely. On girls, a wise man once said, one, girls forgive you for being assertive. They will never forgive you for being passive. Ooh. And two, act like a P, the five-letter P word, not the four-letter P word. Mm. You will get effed. Mm. Mm. That man just showed up and just dropped game on you. And I like the pithiness of the game. And Back again, he said, the brand equity part specifically was amazing. Mm. Struggle to make sense of that concept in the past. Mm. People say, double your prices and people will buy. It makes sense now. Appreciate the clarity. Absolutely. And he's referring to a video I did called How to Build a Brand, which you can find on YouTube. If you type in the Saint in the Center, it'll be on that uh, page. And it, it's great business and product fundamentals, which everyone should understand, especially if they're making attempts at entrepreneurship. Thank you for that. When you're dealing with a female, especially on the first date, you have to keep your eyes open. The challenge is sometimes we become 
narrow in our vision of this girl because we're we're thinking about what we want to extract from her in the immediate moment, which is usually carnal. You hear me? We just want to lay down and beat it down. But we should really be looking at her and seeing what the greater value is that we can take out of the girl. I can tell you that there's some small things I've noticed about women that really make me appreciate them. Number one, you know, are they willing to actually open their wallet and make a contribution? That lets you know that they value you and they feel as though that them being there, you know, is also a privilege for them, not just you being a, having the privilege of taking them out. There's some mutual respect there. Uh, secondly, when the woman values your money like it's her money, there was a time I was in uh, Morocco uh, many years ago and I took a taxi and the, I gave the taxi a certain number of dirham and he gave me back short change. And the girl said, hey, let me see how much he gave you. Oh, hell no. Nah. Hey, bro, you owe this man this amount of money. And it would probably equated to like 60 cents. Uh, but she was like, nah, you don't get your 60 cents and I'm gonna make sure he gives it to you. And then there was another girl I was dealing with in Morocco. I went to go buy a jalaba, which is like a religious garment. And homie was trying to charge me like 70 bucks and I was negotiating with him. And then she was like, why are you negotiating? You can afford this. Like why negotiate? And in my head, I was thinking you're going to be a terrible mother. Like you don't want to negotiate the price. I could save like 20 bucks. It doesn't matter if I have the money, you should always try to negotiate, especially in a bazaar. So, you know, that kind of woman, A, is going to be a terrible mother. B, she's not going to be a good steward of your money because if she sees you negotiating for a better price and she's discouraging it as though like the store owner's her dad, that lets you know that she doesn't value money in general and she damn sure doesn't value your money. So if you ever were to give her any, she's going to squander it. And when you observe those small things about the woman, it lets you know how to deal with her. It lets you know her potential in your life. And a chick like that, I'm going to be super aggressive because you ain't got nothing to lose. You're like, man, use a one hitter quitter. Use a one hitter quitter. I might just pull my meat out right here in the store. Say, hey, suck this because there's no there's nothing you can lose. She has no value other than being a knob slobber because she doesn't have any goddamn morals. She doesn't have any intelligence. She doesn't have any personality. So when you're keeping your eyes open like that, it lets you know how to engage that situation for success. Another thing you need to understand, especially for the text message and your first date is that being that women are naturally inclined to talk more when they're interested in you or they're engaged in the conversation, they're going to become even more talkative and there needs to be a balance, which is to say, as they increase their nature, uh, their propensity to talk, you should reduce your propensity to talk and in turn, increase your inclination to listen. So the fact is that you're always in a bad situation as a person, especially a man and a leader. If you're cutting off someone else or you're trying to talk over someone else, leaders listen, men listen, men have patience, they're attentive. And if you don't reduce your talking, when she increases her talking, you're going to be battling to talk. And that also is very unattractive because you know what people find to be attractive? They find people to be more attractive when that person is interested in them, which is to say, if you're talking and I'm like deep gazing and listening to you and hanging on your every word, like what you're saying is fascinating and I'm not cutting you off and I'm asking short, but intelligent, meaningful questions you feel like you're fascinating. And when you feel fascinating, you're going to feel more confident and you're going to like being around me because I make you feel good. Devin came out of cash out and said, tuition, appreciate the game. Peace of the saints, appreciate you. And thank you to those who support the work. It does mean a lot. And we have thousands watching between our platforms and you know, not everyone clicks the like button. Uh, very few send tuition. So those who do send tuition and those who are members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, you are appreciated. Always remember that when you're dating a woman, especially in that early stage, you want her to match your effort. If she's not matching your effort, that would be an indication that she doesn't value you. And if you're exceeding her in effort, that would also be an indication that you are desperate or you don't have options. And the unfortunate reality of this world is that very few people are noble. And when people encounter weakness, rather than trying to help the weak link, they try to destroy the weak link. It is the nature of the individual. So don't display weakness and don't display being thirsty. You dig? If you're acting like it's the Sahara Desert out here, oh, she ain't about to give you a sip. You dig? She about to hold that back from you and let you die. So make sure that you're 
equally yoked in that kind of a situation. You don't ever want the weaker sex to feel like they're the stronger sex. Furthermore, know that you're engaging life through the principles of truth, family, and wealth. Truth. You know, be real with the female. Don't try to build yourself up to be something that you're not. You get in a situation, you portray yourself to be a millionaire, she's going to expect you to give her that millionaire experience and that millionaire lifestyle. Do you really want to go out paying four or $500 on dinner because she expects you to go to Philippe's or Mr. Chow's because you're a millionaire? Nah, be yourself. Live in truth. Family, you should always be approaching the best of women and looking at, you know, can this woman fit into my family and help expand my name and, you know, cr help me create a strong lineage that's a positive impact in this world? And then wealth. There are many types of wealth. Of course, financial is the one that immediately comes to mind, but there's the greater wealth of happiness. Is this girl contributing to my happiness? One of the gentlemen earlier spoke of a female who is uh, nagging and complaining, and they all do, but there are levels to it. And if you can help educate her and make her more aware, you might be able to tone that down so that you both can share in happiness. And what you should know and the way you should live is that. Now, what would I, how would I behave in this moment if it was the last moment? If this was the last hug that I would ever give this woman, if this was the last five minutes that I had with this person, how would I behave? Not anticipating that there will be more tomorrows because there might not be. That's the mindset you have to put her into so that she behaves correctly and also so that you behave in the best way. So the true key when summarizing what the first date should be about, it should be a minimal investment on your part. It should be about you having a good time so that your entire dating experience is not circled around impressing that girl as though you're some kind of unpaid jester. And if you do those things consistently in a disciplined way, don't overinvest, keep the conversation good do activities that you want to do, but are better with a companion, but they're not so boring as a dinner date, you're going to have better outcomes. And even if you, your outcome is not smashing the girl, you're still going to enjoy yourself and have high quality of life. And if you don't get outside of who you are and trying to impress the girl, you'll always feel like steady in yourself and you'll feel good about yourself. Because guess what? When that girl kick, kick rocks, you're still there. Your conscience is still there. Your memory is still there. Don't embarrass yourself. You dig? Show respect to yourself. Be yourself. Be good to yourself and be good to good people. I'll give you some time to send in your thoughts, questions, comments. We have Nick on Cash App said, peace to the Saints, tuition for the high level game. Thank you. And this is the Nick in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Shout out to Nick. If you need uh, thumbnails created, if you need graphic design, holler at Nick. Happy to put you in uh, contact. Stop playing. Trey said, hey, Marquette, this is unrelated to the topic, but does Jabruzzi do consultations on growing one's entertainment YouTube channel? Peace to the Saints. I bet he could. Um, one thing I can tell you is he's very knowledgeable and he really enjoys his work. And so I'd be happy to uh, get you set up if you want to send me an email or a DM. Um, we, we can get everything set up for you. Marquez just bought the shirt that you were wearing in the roast yesterday. The Dinner, man, woman. Oh, yeah, that one is cold. Yeah, you can go to manandwomanbrand.com. We got the super cold denim t shirts, and they're, they're really attractive because of the way they fit. You know, if you have any level of physical fitness, it's going to enhance it, make it look, make you look good. Wilkins said, Marquette, I was talking to this girl last week on FaceTime because she wanted me to say verbally, I'm her boyfriend, but I said, You're my first lady. We planned to meet Saturday. She didn't answer my calls. Wow. Where did I mess up? Peace to the saints. See, you don't want to put it on yourself and say, where did I mess up? Because that suggests that she is sane. That suggests that she is rational. That suggests that she's not a total dim-witted fool, which she could be any of the aforementioned. So that's the problem is, as I said, the process of romance is not linear. And part of it not being linear is because you're dealing with women. The problem is that, especially if you're a, a rational, intelligent, responsible man, 
you know, if you make a date, hey, I'm gonna meet you at 2 p.m. on Thursday, you're gonna be there at 2 p.m. on Thursday. You might even be there at 155. But that's you. You don't want to project your talents, qualities, character, and levels of responsibility onto someone else. So she might have another guy, or she might just be completely irresponsible, or she might have social anxiety, or she might have something to do with her family that's a greater priority, or she might have met another guy on Tinder, or she has a thousand other reasons that are completely goofy. So you don't want to say, what's wrong with me? What you want to say is, okay, she didn't show up on Saturday and it's Saturday. Uh, who can I switch in if I still want to go out socially? You dig. And when you're not serious with the girl, you don't have any time invested in emotion and money invested in that girl. You should have a couple options to switch in there because, you know, when you got that, that stable or that team, you know, uh, pull somebody off the bench and sit her ass on the bench because that's where she deserves to live. But it will be foolish to take that onto yourself. And that's why I told you guys off the rip, I said, you have low investment up front, low investment of money, low investment of time, low investment of emotion. Because most of them are not going to be worth it. Hey, on Cash App, Daniel sent tuition. He said, Peace to the Saints, this is the Daniel that was the conference lead. Absolutely. Nice, Shout out to Daniel. Peace to the Saints. Good to hear from you. All caught up? Fantastic. Now, I try something new today. I actually went live on uh, TikTok as well. So I'm trying to learn a little bit about that. Saying all kinds of things on the screen. Someone writes, can we see the sources of power poster? Yeah, you can see it, but the question is, do you understand it? Top source of power is a woman's love, then it is a man's respect, then it's wealth, and then it's fame. Those are the greatest sources of power. See, power means things that you can use. People often don't understand power. Shout out to the folks on... Uh, Oh, one of the guys on the chase says, right, so I'm from Morocco. That's what's up. I've been all through Morocco, you know, from Marrakesh to Agadir to Wujda to Beni Malal. Yeah, I've been all through that joint. It's really only like two cities that, that I still need to check out in uh, Morocco. Well, this was fun. This was fun. Uh, you can go ahead and cut us on uh, YouTube.